It's been so long since we've come out here to camp. I always forget how creepy the woods get at night. Sebastian murmured to Eliza as he reached over to turn up the heat. It was pitch black, with nothing in front of them for miles except dense trees and snow on the ground. They had left the house late, and now they were going to be setting up their campsite in the dark. The car was full of unspoken tension. Eliza still thought they left late because Sebastian was being really particular about how the car was packed. While he was angry that she hadn't prepped the food the night before, as he suggested. It probably wasn't anyone's fault, but here they were once again, being passive-aggressive and not communicating. Maybe we should just head back, Eliza sighed. It's already darker than we planned, not to mention it wasn't supposed to start snowing for another two weeks. I feel like we might have missed our chance to get a trip in this winter. She kept her eyes on the road, but stole glances at her husband here and there. He just kept scrolling on his phone, not acknowledging her. She didn't like this quiet resentment that sat between them, and she was trying to find the right thing to say to defuse the situation. The whole purpose of this trip was to reconnect, rekindle their relationship that was now in shambles. Or at least that's what their marriage counselor advised them to do. Sebastian let out a deep breath and put away his phone. He kept his eyes forward, staring at the snow as it swirled in front of them, not looking at his wife as he spoke. I guess you're right. Screw it. Let's just go back. They had both hoped that making the call to give up would ease up some of the tension. But unfortunately, it didn't work. It only got worse. Before they could even pull over to turn the car around, something moved in front of their car, making Eliza slam on the brakes and come to a screeching, sliding stop. Silence fell over the car for a moment. Nothing but the sound of Sebastian and Eliza trying to catch their breath, both tingling with a flood of adrenaline running through their bodies. Eliza was the first one to speak. Seb, what the hell was that? By that, she meant the figure that had jumped right in front of the car. It was tall, over six foot, and built like a pro wrestler. And there were definitely arms and a head and two legs there. But it didn't look human. I, uh, I have no idea. Sebastian tried to respond, staring at the thing. The creature was standing only a few feet from their front bumper, obscured by the darkness. It had what looked like ten foot long wings. They arced up higher than its head and swept down elegantly towards the ground. It wasn't moving, and the couple felt like they were somehow suspended in time. Seb... Call the cops, Eliza said. Sebastian quickly fumbled out his phone and started dialing 911. While Eliza stared at the figure, trying to decide what to do next, she reached for her door handle and prepared to get out of the car. What the hell are you doing? He said as the phone rang. I just want to see what it is. Eliza looked dazed as her words dropped away. I mean, maybe it's a statue that the wind blew in, or a man-sized bird like an eagle. It's not moving. Sebastian opened his mouth to protest, but then the 911 operator answered, and his attention was pulled back to the phone. He began frantically giving the operator a description of their location while trying to make himself sound not completely crazy. He looked around. Yeah, we're on Highway 62. While Sebastian was distracted, Eliza slipped out into the cold night air. The car engine was still running, high beams on, and she had a small utility knife clutched in one hand for a sense of safety. Her breath fogged in the cold air as she took cautious steps towards the thing. It still hadn't moved, 
and she couldn't make up her mind whether it was a living creature or not. She came to a stop just a few feet away from it and froze, listening to the sound of her own breath. She didn't have the chance to plan her next move, though. The creature was alive. It turned to face her, spreading its wings and raising its face as it moved, shuffling towards her. Its skin was dark and covered in wiry-looking fur, but its body was the shape of a large, strong man's. As it extended its wings, Eliza gasped. They were broad and looked powerful. She immediately ran back into the car, locked the doors, and sped away. Sebastian hung up the phone. What happened? What is it? He kept asking questions, but Eliza was too focused on the road, going a hundred miles per hour. Sebastian looked out the window and was surprised to see the creature chasing them. Flying towards the car and ready to swoop down at any moment and attack. Before Sebastian could scream, Eliza cried out. It's Mothman. She remembered all the newspaper articles she stumbled upon on the humanoid. In an instant, Mothman flew down and landed on the road, several feet before them. They were about to crash into the creature with great force, but the creature stopped the car with its hands and didn't even flinch. Eliza slowly looked up at the creature and saw two huge red glowing eyes staring into her soul. It towered over the vehicle and she suddenly felt very small and vulnerable. Finally, it tilted its head and the creature's blazing red eyes looked into hers. Sebastian had been closing his eyes, anticipating the impact. But when there was none, he opened his eyes. He looked over at Eliza. She wasn't moving. She was just staring at the beast, whatever it was. Neither of them were moving or making a sound. They just stared into each other's eyes emitting a sense of pure evil. Sebastian scrambled out of the car as quickly as he could, filled with the urgent need to run away. But as soon as he stepped out of the car, Mothman grabbed him, and Eliza followed. He saw her face, and the person standing there didn't look like his Eliza anymore. Her eyes glowed red, the same shade as the monster's. Before Sebastian could react, she charged towards him with a loud shriek. Their little knife was in her hand, and she didn't hesitate to thrust the blade into his neck. He felt the pain of it, but that wasn't as bad as the sound it made. He heard it when the blade tore through his windpipe and then scraped against a bone. He felt like the air had suddenly been sucked out of the world. But really, his lungs were just hanging, useless inside his body. He felt a hot spill of blood running down his neck from the wound, and then she stabbed him again. As his body hit the ground, Eliza threw her body over his and kept stabbing. Even after the last bit of breath gurgled out of him, and she did it all under the calm, watchful gaze of the Mothman. All of a sudden, she snapped out of it and heard the loud police sirens approaching. She looked around. Mothman had risen up straight into the sky like a helicopter and flew away. And then she looked down at Sebastian's body, which was ripped apart. She was the monster. Eliza slumped on the ground, exhausted by her manic attack and realized that her life was now over. She was too shocked to even shed a tear for her husband. No one would believe her story. She had no proof. Mothman was long gone.